must insist on absolute quiet. Enjoy the show. The fact that I have a platform is entirely due to the fact that I've made a few billion dollars. I am particularly interested in changes in the rules of the game. Capitalism is not directly opposed to open society. Nevertheless, it poses some serious threats. A decline in the value of the dollar is necessary. The United States should find its proper place in a new world order. Glenn Beck has been on this kick that you are actually the master to mind Fox News. It has imported the methods where you can tell the people falsehoods and deceive them. You're watching GBTV. It's about the truth. Washington once wrote, there is but one straight course and that is to seek the truth and pursue its steady. Sometimes it's hard to find. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Who can you trust? I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. Abraham Lincoln once said, I'm a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended on to meet any national crisis. The great point is to give them the real facts. Yeah. Just give it to me straight. It's error alone which needs the support of government. Truth can stand by itself. That's all I'm looking for. Harry Truman said, I don't give people hell. I give them the truth, and they think it's hell. We're about to get started. It's called GBTV. The truth lives here. From New York City, Glenn Beck. Hello, America. From New York. It's our new studios, or what's going to be our new studios here in New York. Um, tonight, I want to show you a little what we've been working on for the past few months and actually the last 10 years and then where we're going. One of the most common questions asked um, of me in the last two years at least is, okay, all right, I got it, Glenn. I know the problems. Jeez, you won't shut up. Now what? Well, this is what? GBTV. You'll understand by the end of the hour. Welcome. What you're about to see is the first half step on a road that we've been paving for a very long time. You and I both know the world is changing, the way you interact with information is changing, and that you're, you, you have a power to affect the world, and it is becoming more clear. And yet, while the people in Egypt and all over the world are beginning to feel that they are more powerful with their voice because of the internet, some reason or another, Americans are feeling less powerful. You feel like your voice isn't being heard. Well, it is, and it's time to change that belief. People are still afraid to be the first to try to, to step out uh, into the darkness and try something new. Well, we're gonna do that tonight. This is why we're all gathered here. Um, it is a typical American experiment, one that hasn't been tried before. And the first question is, can the messages of our founders survive on their own without the traditional trappings of mass media? Is that possible? Next question, will people chase the truth outside of their comfort zone? Can a man in America still color outside the lines and survive? Tonight we begin that journey to find out. What are we? Are we still America? I believe the answer to that is yes. And there's tremendous power in that belief. Um, everything that I know about goodness, good, I mean, a business, good and bad, I can trace back to two individuals. The first one is Orson Welles. He taught me to dream big. His dedication to his craft, unrelenting pursuit of his vision, um, are standards which I have spent the last 10 years trying to chase um, uh, and try to capture. Um, it's inspiring. He also taught me how to think out of the box and to never give up. If you really believe it, do it. Whether it was a project that everybody thought was insane, like what was called RKO 281, everyone said, 
it's nuts. You can't do that. He did it. He was uh, ridiculed for quite a while, but RKO 281 became Citizen Kane, one of the greatest movies of all time. He did that, or he, uh, he also wouldn't give up because he said there's got to be a way to accomplish all of these things. So he rented an ambulance just so he could turn on the sirens and get from one theater to the next theater fast enough in New York traffic. This guy really looked at the world completely differently. He broke all the traditional boundaries that stopped everyone else in their tracks. They were just speed bumps to Orson Welles. Um, he wasn't perfect. He was kind of a flawed individual. He taught me a lot of things that are bad as well. He, but one of the biggest things, he picked a lot of ill-advised fights, uh, sometimes risking his entire career against titans of industry. Um, I, I, I mean, I, it did occur to me uh, recently, I, maybe I should have considered that little part of his life a little more before I locked horns with George Soros. But he did what he felt was right. He did it for different reasons. When I first started my company and named it in, I think, 2001, it was Mercury Radio Arts, and it was named after this man. Uh, this man's company was Mercury Radio Theater. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we included the artists, because a lot of the people that you'll see tonight, I believe, are artists. Um, people need to look at their craft as art. I wanted it to be a company like his that people would look back 20 years down the road and say, how on earth did they do that? Um, the company did radio, they did live events, they did television, they did charity, they did A28. This, this summer we're going to Israel. We did best-selling books. How could they do that with half the staff of just one of the organizations receiving millions of dollars just to shut them up? How did we put all of it together? Well, we haven't finished yet. We're tired, but we haven't finished yet. This is one of our new companies. In fact, uh, Mercury Inc. is one of our new companies too. Uh, that's a publishing company now with Simon & Schuster. The other one back there is The Blaze. That's a news company that you'll hear more about tonight. We just started. This one is Markdown.com. This is about value and values. I told you about two years ago. That's the only thing that's going to matter. Well, we're doing something about it. This is where it all started for me, the Glenn Beck radio program in 2000. What's amazing is I was walking down this hallway today. I realized 10 years ago I was broke. And now I'm going to ask you tonight to help me name this one. This is a new charity project that I'm beginning. We'll tell you about it. There are so many people that are starving for the truth. So many people that are starving um, for the truth that they're denied on a daily basis. We need to find a way to get that truth to them. Here comes the next project, the next phase of my life. For 10 years, my life has been about what I've learned from this guy. But after 828, I began to feel a sense of urgency on what is, um, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Next 10 years of my life are all about this guy. This is Walt Disney. Meet the next 10 years of my life. Walt Disney found his mouse. Tonight, we begin to try to find ours. Come on. GBTV is definitely the biggest thing we have ever tried to do. Is the world ready? It's probably not quite ready. This is the beginnings of the new home of GBTV. Even though there's 20 million Netflix subscribers, you know, there's 100 million subscribers to the Fox News channel. That's what I told Glenn. Glenn, people spend their whole lives trying to get where you are. Why do you want to leave that? I believe he is one of the top five television brands in America. I, I don't know, but you're going to have to think of this outside of the box. Nobody works harder. Nobody is more creative. There is no box that will fit this. This will be Glenn Beck unfiltered. Never stop the cameras rolling. I mean, he's risking everything he's built over the past decade, everything all of us have built. So we could, like, be bankrupt very quickly. The last few days, uh, I've been a little freaked out of my mind. I'm not scared. I, I, I'm nervous. Yeah, from a business standpoint, this makes no sense at all. It's going to be tough. Um, there's a lot of deadlines. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to meet. We're three weeks away. I mean, 
But, you know, uh, when people hear about the project, um, they're, they're all excited. Depending on the day or the hour, sometimes there's more terror than excitement. A little stressed here. <laughs> We're a little on the edge. How do we generate consistent, constant publicity for what this is? Eric, I like the way you think. We are about five years ahead of this, but it doesn't matter. I'm going broke. Yeah, we can quit. We can spend your money well. Will this network even work? And what kills me is, doesn't really matter. <laughs> matter. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Welcome to um, our studios in New York. As these are the friends and the family of some of the people that um, work for Mercury. There are people all through the hallways. The hallway that I showed you a minute ago, that's the hallway that you will be coming through um, soon as we finish this set over the summer and open the doors on uh, September 12th. I want to show you what we're working on and what we've been working on for the last um, while. This actually is where um, this began um, just this last um, September, October, this is right after 828. This is the E4 project. I actually, I'm such a geek, I actually sat at my kitchen table and I drew this up one day because I was trying to figure out some of the things that just um, I've been thinking about and I've been trying to put them together in my head and this is where I came up with the e, um, E4 project. It is education, enlightenment, education, empowerment, and entrepreneurship. I wrote this American Dream Labs 2011. Um, what this is turning into is this entire project. This is where it really started. And I, I put this up and I started the E4 project. But I still have been wrestling with these problems because this is really what if you're an American citizen this is what you think we're supposed to be working on if we if you look at all of the problems we have government doesn't work politics is out of control it's all about the parties or power or dollars media isn't trustworthy it doesn't reflect you or me I, I don't even know what the media is even I don't, I don't I, do you recognize the media at all the cities and states are broke and broken. Capitalism has been corrupted. Our faith is nothing but politics in many cases. Education is for sale. Our families have been devalued. And the American feels powerless. Well, gee, that's a little overwhelming. And that brings me back to the question that you say to me every time we meet. And that is, okay, I get it. Now what? Well, if we're going to fix it, I, I contend if you will, actually slide that one back here for a second. If you will, I contend we've been looking at the wrong things. I contend if we discount the two that we've been working on, we can fix our country. If we just forget about the government doesn't work, it's all about politics, and the cities and the states are broken, we don't worry about them, they'll fix themselves. If we do this, 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 and this. If we start instead of at the top, if we start at the bottom, Americans feel powerless. No, they don't. 912 Project, you're not alone. We surround them. Americans feel powerless. Fix that. Families devalued. Education for sale. If you fix these three, this one fixes itself, and this one fixes itself. If you fix these, this one fixes itself. So how do we do it? Well, now you can take it away. Here, let's start with the media. Let's look at the media. Here's the media's problem. They're special interest. They're politically correct. Um, they're afraid because they're beholden to ratings or sponsors or the government. They're not trustworthy. The next problem with the media, not trustworthy. Why? Because they have an agenda, right? In entertainment in the media, you have the studio system. You selling light bulbs? Just tell me you're selling light bulbs. Hey, by the way, see the Christmas tree back here that we're saying it looks so great in Rockefeller Center? Yeah. <laughs> we're selling light bulbs. That's all you have to do. And they're gatekeepers. You have to pass through certain gates. Well, that doesn't happen that way with YouTube. It, uh, you, don't, you don't need to have the guy from Sony Records show up at your club to hear you sing a song and maybe, maybe you got a shot. You don't need that. Not now. 
Get yourself on YouTube. Get on iTunes. Done. Why are we still accepting this with our information? And here's the problem that we've been going over a lot. No one over 55 is using Netflix. And no one under 25 is using television. So there's a split. At some point, that's going to break apart. We've got to find a way to merge these two. There's a split. This has to be fixed. So here's what we have come up with, the way to fix it. One, here's the solution. We are going to, last um, September, we started something called The Blaze. And first hire was Scott Baker. And Scott is here, and Scott is the guy who, um, how long ago did we meet? Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago. This is incredible because three and a half years ago, I was in a studio in Pittsburgh, and Scott interviewed me, and he said, you ready for this one? He said to me, uh, 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 we're doing this internet thing. We recorded it, and I said. So when's this going to be online? Yeah. And you said? Uh, that it just was. It was live. And you were like, whoa, you can do that? I didn't, three and a half years ago, I didn't realize you could, you, you could do the interview right. like that um, and so quickly how the world right. has changed. Then the next thing um, we did, I hired Scott and we put the blaze um, together. And the blaze is named after the burning bush. Um, stand in the fire of the truth or you'll be destroyed. Um, and so that's why we put that together. Now the next controversial thing I did is uh, we... We hired Betsy. Now, Betsy is, what's your background exactly, Betsy? Or? I'm a business executive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she put the Huffington Post on the map. Coincidentally, they're now seemingly falling apart. But um, Betsy, is, um, uh, Betsy came to us from uh, the HuffPo, and actually you were thinking about going to like Apple or I don't know, to space. You were going to build a big spaceship or something. <laughs> Lots she's going on on the internet. Yeah, she's very, very, um, she's much too successful to be hanging around with the likes of me. Um, but I got a lot of heat, and you got a lot of heat. We both got a lot of heat. And from what's different funny, audiences. Yes, from different audience, audiences. Uh, Betsy and I never talked about one thing. What was it? Politics. Politics. I have no idea how you vote. I have no idea. I, uh, liberal, conservative, I have no idea. I don't want to know. I like it that way. Um, and, well, you know how I vote. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But it doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. Correct. So here's what we're going to do. When we put the blaze together, GBTV is going to start doing news. You're going to get a two-hour broadcast every night. This is the way it begins, a two-hour broadcast, and it's going to have a news presence. You'll be able to get the news, but you're not going to get the news that you can get everywhere else. Sure, there will be the Anthony Weiner story from time to time, but there will be no sacred cows. It will be independent. Right now, we're kind of, describe the website now compared to how it's going to be in the coming six to 12 months. Well, right now, we cover politics, we cover current events, we have a fabulous editorial staff. We are going wide in terms of coverage. We're going to talk about education, we're going to talk about faith, we're going to talk about the economy. There are so many more topics that Scott and his team are going to talk about. Let me show you exactly um, um, some of the things, what it's like in, in the most, and I apologize, Betsy, for the most embarrassing desk in the history of the world. <laughs> the smallest she desk. has smallest the desk. Smallest she, we got her a desk and she said, I don't care what desk, we got her as a joke. It's like a $68 desk that you screw together from like Ikea. <laughs> She's still using it today. I want to show you what her office, um, why she doesn't really need a desk. Look what happens in her office. We're going to create the newscast of the future. A fresh set of eyes, a fresh perspective, and a completely new format. In a time when there are a lot of confusing issues out there, I think we can help people sort through. We'll talk about current events, we'll talk about faith, we'll talk about the economy, the stories um, that are the most important to Glenn's audience, to our audience. We're going to bring that content with an edge, with a personality. I look up and it's the top story and I could not believe it. Yeah. We try to kind of weave that tapestry 
of the day's event so that you, you can come to the place and not feel like you missed out on anything. You're going to be getting things here that you're not being provided in other news outlets. Glenn says a lot about connecting the dots and how different stories and different topics are related to each other. And that's one of the hallmarks of The Blaze. We are not just doing what everyone expects us to do. Our job is to go through and find those nuggets, pump those up to the headline and say, wait a minute, did you see what's in this story? There are a lot of choices out there. Trust us to kind of sift through the news of the day. We believe the truth has no agenda. That's what The Blaze is all about. Okay. That's the uh, website, The Blaze, but now we are working and we've partnered with this man. This is um, Joel Cheatwood. I don't even know what your title is. Do we even have titles in this company? They, we change them about every week. I yeah, think. okay. Just, yeah. So he was a vice president of um, program development and at CNN. He's the guy who discovered me, right. um, much to his chagrin. Yeah, I still get letters for that. I know, uh, at CNN, and then he went over to Fox. They hired me over at Fox, and then um, he's joined us over here and he is helping redesign uh, the news and we've had people in both of your office that were we're trying to find and fuse a new way um, to do the news I can hire the best technology company and get what you're seeing on your computer thrown up onto that screen I can do it MLB does it and that's who we've hired MLB we've partnered with what is the name of the company major league base MLB Advanced, advanced media technology, media technology, whatever. Um, it's the baseball people that throw the baseball game up there. They're providing the technology that you will see in the coming months. Now, the next problem was education and youth that we wanted to fix. The problem is they're not being taught history. This is, uh, if this venture doesn't work out, um, this will be the last thing I sell before my family lives under the bridge and I might even I might even live under the bridge with my family and still have this this is George Washington's compass this is the only one in existence um, it is um, he was a surveyor and I'm going to tell you the significance of this compass um, in, a, in just a little while but you have to you have to be taught the truth in history, and nobody is. I was working on GBTV over the weekend, and I was walking down the hallway with this compass, and I had it in my hand like this, and my thumb right here, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a, an indentation right here. I believe it's where he held his thumb. He had this in every war that we ever fought. He carried it when he was 16 until his death. History is important. This compass plays a role. I'll, ex I'll explain why here in a second. We're not being taught critical thinking. Our children are not watching cable news. 25, 35 year olds are not watching cable news. And John Stewart is their newsman. He's not a newsman. I don't know why he is that one. And they're being organized and they feel alone. Essie Cup is here. Essie is going to be, um, play a big uh, part in the solving of this problem. Just address this one. They feel alone, Essie. Yeah, I mean, I, I know exactly how they feel because I was a conservative on a liberal college campus. I, I was on a number of liberal college campuses and now when I go around the country, it doesn't matter what geographical area I'm in. Uh, if there's a college, it's liberal, and the conservative students there are put in the really unfortunate position of having to make a choice. Do I stand up and say what I believe in class and risk uh, my future here, or do I shut my mouth and just try to get through? That's not an education. That's not fair. That's not how it, it should be. It is an education. <laughs> You're shaking your head. <laughs> it is an education. It it's is an absorbs, education of... Yeah sit down, shut up, and you'll play exactly. by the rules. And that's not what Americans have ever done. That's, right. not, that's not what, what we do. Um, you have, um, you've been out already mm -hmm. um, with the cameras. Yes. You wanna roll that here? Sure. SC, again, needs to uh, be there, provide information for the colleges, um, but more importantly, provide a forum. 
I'm Essie Cup. I'm here at Columbia University, which is in my backyard, and I'm talking to students about liberal bias on college campuses. It's an issue that matters a lot to me, and unfortunately, there's no shortage of liberal bias here. How hard is it for conservative students at a place like Columbia? I feel like at first it's really intimidating. So it takes a lot of courage to be conservative at a place like Columbia. When bias is institutionalized, it really hurts college Republicans because whenever you're trying to hold a meeting or you're trying to campaign or you're trying to have an event and a liberal club or the administration will do things in order to prevent that from happening. We all know what the problem is, so let's fix it. Let's do something about it. I don't care if we have to go to campus to campus, take the universities back. This is coming out this um, summer. It's called The Original Argument. This is history. This is uh, 400 and some pages. This is the, uh, the founders um, had to make their case. They didn't just say, hey, change and hope for change. They actually had to make their case to the American people of what we'd be changing to. This is now written in today's language. Um, and it's out to teach people what the case for the Constitution is. That's one of the things that we're doing here. We've just optioned these um, for uh, movies uh, or maybe documentary. We're not sure. This is a tremendous book called Johnny Appleseed, The Man, the Myth, the American Story by Howard Means. I read the first five pages of this and I went into Joel's, option, uh, Joel's office and I said, buy the rights to this book. It's tremendous. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to say the rest of the book turned out to be as good as the first five pages. Um, we've, we've optioned this, the Wednesday's letters. You know, when we were talking about, um, we were talking about how the family is under assault, this is a tremendous book about um, a family that's really on the ropes and mom and dad die and they start to read letters that they had written each other. It's been a while since I read it, right? They've written each other, right? The, the husband wrote to the wife a series of letters over the years and through the history of the family and, and the right. kids learning, they really reunite. And it, it is a tremendous, tremendous story. This is um, a book that is coming out this summer. This is the first book without my name on it from Mercury Inc. this summer. This is Michael Vey, The Prisoner of Cell 25. This thing is, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say, um, uh, this one, when I was thinking, as I was working on this project over here, I'm thinking, how do we connect with the youth of America? How do we do it? I wish there was a way that we could teach people values and principles and how capitalism has gone awry, et cetera, et cetera, without teaching them that, without saying, okay, kids, now let me tell you, this is really, this is really important here. You're gonna they're not going to read that. They need a good story, and it needs to be wrapped up in it. Prisoner of Cell 25, I read, I devoured it. My wife read, devoured it. My daughters read, devoured it. Everybody we have run this book through has devoured it. So we're doing books, movies, documentaries, and then this is my favorite project that you'll see soon on GBTV, graphic television. This is um, an idea that I've been playing with for a while, um, and it's only becoming more real to me because of, my, uh, because of my son. He is just getting into comic books, and uh, we're reading it, and I, I, f I love the Green Lantern. But one of the problems that I um, uh, encountered when I was watching Johnny Tremaine and watching some of the old Disney shows that he did is the powdered wigs just throw everybody off. There's, you can't, you can't relate to them anymore. They, you know, well, I don't know, Ben. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe we should get onto our horses with our wigs and ride like wild men. No. Um, but the principles are there. We have to connect them. So what we're working on here is a, a graphic novel set in the future about our founders. Um, it's a kind of a dark story. Um, uh, one where freedom has been snuffed out and the founding ideas now, um, now suddenly they're popular in colleges because nobody can read them because they've been banned and people have to piece them back together and it's the story of 
uh, a revolution in America about 50 years down the road after all of a man's freedom has been lost on the planet. Um, so we have that we're going to be doing. Then we also have critical thinking classes where we're going to invite some of the people that SC finds all around the country. And then Brian Sack is here, and he's the one in the front row wearing a tuxedo. Yes. And I'm not really... It's a nice tuxedo. Thank you. I'm an usher for Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark, <laughs> so I'm on the board. Yeah, yeah. Why are you wearing a tuxedo, Brian? Uh, I thought I was going to win a Tony. Right, right. Here's, uh, here's Brian Sack and what he does best. Hi, I'm Brian Sack, and I wanted to tell you about an exciting development, for me anyway. I'm getting my very own show, and I didn't even have to get caught using a high-priced escort service. It's called the BS of A. No, it's not called the BS of A, Brian. Well, what? No, what? Joel doesn't want you to call it that. Why not? Why, I mean, what are you talking about? I, I've already commissioned a t-shirt. Joel said no, Brian. Well, I... No! Hi, I'm Brian Sack, and I wanted to tell you about my brand new show on GBTV. It's called the... It's a program, a, a, a program that has no name, but when it does have a name, I hope you remember the name. And of course, I hope you watch it. And when you watch it, I can tell you one thing with certitude. My show will be an amazingly entertaining, delightfully nonpartisan look at the news, politicians, and politics of the day. And it will look something like this. Newsroom me. The House of Representatives today voted to rebuke the Obama administration for engaging in kinetic military action in Libya without congressional approval. The 268 to 145 vote gave the president two weeks to provide more details of the mission known by its porn star name as Odyssey Dawn. According to lawmakers, if the president fails to provide details on the mission's scope, duration, and cost, they may be forced to do something about it, making this legislation roughly the equivalent of saying, don't make me pull this car over. A similar measure proposed by eight-inch tall Ohio Democrat Dennis Kucinich went even further, demanding cessation of hostilities and withdrawal of all U.S. forces instead of merely paying lip service to the idea. So of course it failed to pass, leaving the distraught tiny congressman no choice but to console himself in his Barbie mansion drinking thimbles of wine. Trust me, I'll play no favorites, pull no punches, bar no holds, and use any cliche necessary to emphasize my objectivity and complete indifference to party affiliation. So I hope you'll join me on my new show because they spent a lot on this top. Yeah, I'm... Is it a racer over there or something? I just... I will not all... Not all ideas work. America. At least he gave it a shot. <laughs> he gave it a shot. Now, the last piece of this is not on wheels, and I'll have to remember that. It's very hard. Even in New York City, there's very few chalkboards still available. I'm going to get to this in a second. Let me, just, let me just show you one more thing here. Over on this table here, this is what you're going to start to see. We're working, um, and we're going to build... Um, a studio here in New York, and then we're working on a um, another studio elsewhere. Um, the other studio is going to be uh, larger. It will be a full sound stage that we'll um, be able to make uh, television, radio, and movies out of. And we'll keep a New York studio here. But this is what the New York studio is. These are some of the plans that we're looking at. Um, I just wanted to show you this because it reminded me of the chalkboard. Um, this is one of the designs of the chalkboard. This is a three-sided chalkboard. I've, I've actually asked them to design a, a full cube that could be used on all of the sides of the cube. Uh, the best they could come up with so far is the three-sided rotating chalkboard. This is actually what people do with their time that work for me. Um, GBTV, that starts in September. Now here's something that is going to start right away. And this is the thing that I said to you. I thought might be the most important thing that maybe I do in my life. I don't know. The last things to repair, family, faith, capitalism, and you, to give you self-confidence that you make a difference. How do we do this? 
Well, you really want to fix our country. It's going to come from a place like Joplin. When I, when did Joplin happen? A few weeks ago. Just few and I, I went in and I asked um, the money people um, and, uh, and also uh, the network, I want to go to Joplin. And they said, can't, too expensive, too difficult, and you'll get in the way. And I said, okay, well, I agree with the get in the way thing, so I'll go with that one. But I sent my staff out, and we did a, we did a test shoot. I want to show you what we, what we came back with and, and where we're headed. I don't want to be the story. I'm tired of being the story. I don't want to be that. Let's show others. I wanted to go to Joplin. Um, and I didn't want to show Joplin and, you know, Anderson Cooper is there. And Joplin, he's got the t-shirt. I don't own a t-shirt like that and you don't want to see me in a t-shirt like that. I wanted to show the people getting together. control what happens. Um, all you can do is how it affects you and what you do with it. Um, and I'll, th this community, I'm amazed. And not even just this community, but I've been here and I've had people driving from an hour and a half, two hours. Someone from Houston is here with me now uh, just to help out and volunteer. And it, it's just been amazing. The lesson is that, uh, you know, God is in control and that uh, he's not a man in these people. Um, but also another lesson is, is that people um, are coming out to help. The support and the people that are coming out is overwhelming. If I feel we need to be someplace, we'll be there. Why aren't we tying all of this together? Why don't we do what he did? I don't need the money. Why don't I do what he did? Why don't we fix America? one town at a time. Why don't we tie these three things together? I know, i looking at these pictures here. These were amazing buildings. America was a textile manufacturer. To getting somebody to make a shirt in America, impossible. This shirt as it stands now, Tim, where's Tim? 100 and 140, 150 dollars to have this made and sold in America. I could have it made for about 40 or 50 dollars. Uh, that's what it cost me to make a shirt for me, but to then turn around and retail, it's about 150 dollars. You can't sell a 150 dollar shirt in America. Why, if you make it in America, if I make it overseas, I could sell it to you for, you know, 60 dollars, 70 dollars, but not here in America. Well, those jobs don't, don't even exist anymore. Well, we have towns that are imploding. Tim is, um, is a guy that um, is a designer, friend of the family, and he has come up with, I, I had this guy who came to my office, and he's a designer that you would know, and he came to my office, and he walked in, and he was freaked out of his mind, because he thought, oh, geez, here's, comes a, here's a TV host that wants to do a clothing line. Let me guess, it's another polo pony. And I told him the whole story, and he saw this, and he said, this stuff is fantastic. Are you kidding me? And he said, and I said, well, it'd all have to be made in America. And he said, oh, okay. Oh, that's not going to be done. And I said, but I have some towns in mind. I think we can find some towns that um, might want those jobs, and maybe we can restart some factories. Maybe we can teach people a skill. And I said, all the money will go to charity. And not only will the money, not only will we restart a town, but what we're going to do, do you remember the, remember the picture that I showed you and I said we're going to need a name for this? We're going to need something. I'm calling it now just for working purposes, the compass and the heart. And what it is is it's going to be people that when there's a problem in the town, it's just going to be neighbors that you can trust, that you know will help. They'll have, we'll put, we'll position water and chainsaws and whatever emergency supplies there will need in regions of the country. And we will have volunteers that will help each other. 
and we will really truly be the kind of people that we're supposed to be. We'll serve each other. But if there needs to be some money and some funding, great. Then that's where, that's where this money will go. While everybody is here in New York working on this studio, and while everybody is in other parts of the country working on another studio or two, I'm going to be going to Israel. This is Restoring Courage. These were the original designs, one with David, and uh, we couldn't get one with Esther, and we, we couldn't decide on what we were going to do. And honestly, I got onto the plane um, with no money, with no meetings, with nothing but something that was on my heart that had to be done. It was before the president made the speech or anything else. But I know we are supposed to be people of honor and integrity, and I know we are supposed to stand, and not for a political party, not for a specific solution, but stand for peace and stand for goodness and stand with Israel. This summer, right away, you're going to get a couple of things on GBTV. While we're busy working in here, and I'm in Israel, um, you're going to get a couple of things on GBTV.com, and that is this. You're going to get specials, all the behind the scenes stuff. You're going to get um, all of the uh, events from Israel. I'm going to, are we going to do the Poland We're going to try, absolutely. Um, I believe we're going to Poland. Oh, we're waiting for one more piece of somebody who, is, who was actually at Auschwitz as a child who is going to take me through Auschwitz, but you are going to go with me live. Um, you're going to go with me in one place that for security reasons, I'm not going to tell you where, um, but there are some things that I'm going to show you in parts of the world that no one gets to see anymore because it's just too darn dangerous. I'm going in with 1,500 troops, I'm told, at 2 o'clock in the morning after they shut the city down and put a curfew on, and we're going to take our camera in live, and you will see it. Uh, live on GBTV and experience things that no one gets to see. Then you will see what is going to be an amazing event in Israel. I know you can't be there, um, but if you want to be there, we'll take you there live. You will see amazing things this summer and you will be able to contact us and work so it will be able to be thrown up into a screen like this and you can get together with your friends, you can get together with your church, you can get up together with community groups, but I ask you to get together. The whole idea behind this is to create a community of people linking arm in arm through modern technology. If we can't be there together face to face, we can be there electronically, arm in arm heart to heart, doing the right thing. I want to show you just a piece of what's coming on Restoring Courage. It started with a single listener. I just got this in from an insider. Glenn, you're dangerous. God bless you. I love you like a brother, and even though I've never met you. But I have to unplug. I say that you're dangerous because you make people care. You've made me care. My heart tells me to unplug and let God work it all out. A simple message. How many people feel like this? You can't unplug. We're going to be held responsible for what we allowed to happen to this country. All that is required is that her people wake up. We know it can be done in the blink of an eye because we saw it happen on September 12th. We just reconnected which gave rise to a movement. Commit yourself to live the principles that you knew were true and the values that you knew were true on 912. Become a 912er. Words became action. USA! USA! And then sacrifice. Find it to be true yourself. Please, dear God, take the 40-day and 40-night challenge. Join me at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on 828. August 28, 2010. 
hundreds of thousands of Americans made their way to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. to stand up for their country, for each other. America today begins to turn back to God. We need a great revival in the United States of America, and this may be the start of it. It's time to stand again. Unite behind a holy nation under siege. It's time to restore courage and make a stand with the people of Israel. Inside the walls that surround Jerusalem and stand with people of all faiths all around the world. This August, join me for an event I have named Restoring Courage. On August 24th, 2011, from Jerusalem, a global event like none other in history. Restoring Courage. Only on GBTV. The truth lives here. These are the different things that you're going to see in newspapers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we're changing TV, so you can change the world. This, I think, is my favorite. When your grandkids <laughs> ask if you remember, you can say, yes, I was there. <clears throat> what we're going to do in this studio is a lot of stupid television. What we're doing there could change the world. And you're going to be a part of it. In one way or another, we ask for your support. This is where we become public television. Um, my uh, business partner said, uh, if people don't sign up at $9.99, Glenn, we'll be broke. And I said, I want to make it $4.99. And he said, we're really broke. And I said, people are struggling. And um, if they're not, they might be. And I want to do it as cheaply as we can. Well, we have a $9.99 package that, if you can afford it, I'd love to have you there. But this is what you can buy in New York. Believe it or not, this is $5. Uh, this is $5. A Happy Meal is $5. This little trinket, a gallon of gas is $5. Do we provide, do we provide this, one of these a month of service to you? Have we saved you $5? Have we given you $5 worth of information? Do we do that once a month? If so, I ask you to subscribe to GBTV.com because Somebody's going to ask you, do you remember when? And you can say, yes. Not only was I there, I helped fund it. I ask you to subscribe now at GBTV.com. And just so you know, because I know I started with Walt Disney and the New York Times and everybody's going to say, oh, you yeah, actually you know he's going to be trying to say he's going to build an amusement park. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've already, done, I've already done some of the sketches, so we are doing that. But I said at the very beginning that um, we had to find our mouse. Well, I don't know, because I haven't checked to see if he had a tail. I think if he had a tail, it would be probably a barbed tail and a pitchfork. But uh, we may have found our mouse, the first episode of Spooky Dude. Here it is. And now, the adventures of Spooky Dude. Guided by his trusty fallibilism and reflexivity, Spooky Dude is committed. Very, very committed. To the never-ending battle for uh, truth. Well, as truth is defined by what you think truth should be for you, you know, at this time. Or maybe truth should just be what I say it is. Redistributive justice, you know? I mean, except for me. I mean, not, not me. And some other stuff. Today's episode, The International Way. As I'm sure you all read in my spooky book, the sovereignty of the states must be subordinated to the international law and international institutions. But Spooky Dude's time is running out, and a frustrating new menace is threatening his life's work. The greatest opposition to this idea is coming from... Sorry, just a stock alert. <laughs> is coming from... Oh, oh 
She's white. Why do I have to do this all the time, huh? The greatest opposition is coming from the United States. Especially those Midwestern flyover states. Oh, they're just uh, for the guns and the religion. Can this mortal enemy be defeated? Can national sovereignty be curbed? Before it's too late. Will Spooky Dude ever escape the hypnotic trance of the Open Society logo? Uh, so pretty. Tune in next time to find out on The Adventures of Spooky Dude. That will begin on 912. GBTV is at the forefront of a historic shift. And not historic because of me or any of the friends and family that are here. But because we're breaking new ground. It is historic because you are in charge. And I want you to look at this one last piece right here on the big blue wall. I've told my staff, GBTV is not a noun. It's a verb. No couch potatoes allowed. You stop in, you read. You learn, you laugh, you speak out, but mainly you stand. Join us, GBTV, from New York. Good night, America. We are the change we seek. are the revolutionaries. We are the help voices cry out for. We're the Americans the world has waited for. We are the truth. We are the future. GBTV.